Let's all turn page 191. Page 191, let's all stand. We'll sing, In My Heart There Rings a Melody. I have a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody. Tis a melody of love. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody of love. I love the Christ who died on Calvary. Washed my sins away. He put within my heart a melody, and I know it's there to stay. In my heart, there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart, there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. This evening, glad that you're here. Uh, looking forward to what the Lord has for us today. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless uh, services today and all that will come uh, to, to, to follow. Uh, let's pray. Brother John, lead us in prayer, please, sir. Amen. All right, you can be seated. How, how many of you, how many, oh, let me make sure I get all this stuff going on here before I get in trouble. How many of you heard they're eating in the back? All right, y'all didn't hear that? All right, that's why I've asked Brother Jaco, he's going to be doing the lesson tonight, and I'm going to go eat, so I'm just, I'm going to do the announcements, I'm going to turn it over to him, I'm out of here. Pizza and ice cream, amen. I'm, all right, now that I've said that, I don't want to see nobody sneaking out. <laughs> Amen. Hope you've had a good week. It's been a, a, a pleasant week uh, already this week. The weather's been nice. Uh, a little bit of rain here and there, but that's all right. We've got to have a little rain help the flowers grow, but uh, otherwise it's not been too terribly bad. Uh, so uh, thank the Lord for that. Uh, appreciate all of the, uh, the prayers and everything throughout the weekend. Hope we had a great su service Sunday. Uh, just enjoyed the time of fellowship together. Uh, looking forward to... Uh, Wednesday night and then, and then going forward from here. So several we want to remember, if you go ahead and get a prayer list, uh, we'll go ahead and, there we go, if you'll get one, if you need one, raise your hand, we'll make sure you get one, all right? We got one right up here, Brother, Brother, Brother Bill, right up here toward the front, if you want to bring that up. Uh, all right, there we go, we got some in the back there that need it as well. All right, this will be a, the, the list of those that have asked interest in our prayers. Let me go ahead and give you a couple of announcements by, before we get to that. Number one, don't forget about the Vacation Bible School flyers. They're on the, uh, I think they're in Miss Christie's box by her front, by her door, uh, the, the secretary's door. Um, don't get one of these. These are not fixed. Those out there are fixed. This is, doesn't have the date on it, but those do. Uh, <clears throat> so if you want to get some of those and start passing those out, let folks know uh, about what's going on with Vacation Bible School. We're excited about uh, everything going forward for that and getting all that together. Uh, so you pray about that and looking forward to that. 
pray about the bus. We're excited about uh, the bus continuing to roll. Uh, they'll be going back out Saturday morning, knocking doors again, uh, talking to those that rode the bus, and then uh, trying to enlist a few others. Uh, we're, we're, looking at, uh, we're looking at trying to fill that one up, and I'm praying we fill that one up consistently. Lord, give us another one. I, you know, I, I'm just open to whatever the Lord wants to do. <laughs> so we'll be praying about the bus and all the things going on there. Pray for, uh, do remember uh, upcoming events. Sunday is our uh, Calvert City Convalescent Center. We'll be going over there Sunday afternoon at 2.30. So we'll be meeting over there uh, about 45 minutes to an hour. We'll be singing uh, most of the time. Probably think last time we sang for 35, 40 minutes and had about a 5 or 10 minute devotion. Uh, we'll be doing that again uh, Sunday. So at 2.30, if you'd like to join us, you're welcome to, to meet us there. Uh, if you want to meet here at the church, we can do that and ride over together however you want to do that. But uh, anyway, so do remember that. And also Sunday, we're going to have missionary Tim Carter uh, and his wife with us. Uh, he is a missionary with what the, the, the name of the ministry is Core Ministries or Core Missions. And, and what they do, and again, I'm not going to try to steal all of his thunder. I'll let him uh, do all of that while he's here Sunday. But Mainly, the, the, the basics of what they do is they are a mission support uh, group that helps na foreign nationals on the foreign field through local missionaries. Uh, so kind of the way that works, a, a, a missionary would have to recommend this national pastor, uh, and then they would go and investigate and meet them and see the work. Uh, and then if all of that checks out, then they would start trying to help raise funds for that national work to help in whatever area, build buildings, uh, you know, help the pastor to, to be on the field full time or, or whatever's needed. Uh, and, and that all goes through that local missionary, doesn't go straight to that, to that national, it goes through the missionary. Uh, so it's very well regulated and governed. Uh, but I'm looking forward to hearing from them. Uh, that they're normally, normally we would have missionaries on Sunday night, however, Due to the fact that they've got to drive back to Georgia uh, Sunday afternoon because Monday morning they've got, they've got to be at the hospital to take a COVID test so they can get on a flight to go back to Egypt uh, early next week. Uh, they're, he'll be here Sunday with us Sunday morning. So I'm looking forward to he hearing him and hearing about the ministry and seeing all this. They just got back from Egypt uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so now they're getting ready to go back over there. Uh, so you, I, I'm looking forward to hearing about the work. I, I really believe that that is the future of mission work uh, is going to be reaching more and more and more into uh, foreign nationals and training them and helping them, whether it's Bible college or uh, local church training or whatever it is, uh, that they may pastor those churches uh, and start more churches in the outlying areas. Uh, God forbid if it ever came to a place to where uh, our missionaries are expelled from the country, uh, they may kick us out, uh, but they're not going to kick them out. Uh, you know, so it's always a good investment when you invest in the kingdom of God. So I, I'm excited to hear about what's going on there. Uh, looking forward to hearing from them Sunday. So we'll have that going on Sunday as well. All right. Everybody ready? Got your prayer list? We're ready to go? All right. Let's go ahead and look at these. Continue to pray for Miss Robin. Uh, we're still waiting to hear any news. So do remember to pray for her. Uh, I know she would appreciate that. Uh, continue to pray for Miss Phyllis Dunn. Uh, Miss Phyllis was in the hospital this week. She got out today. Uh, she is home. She's feeling better. Uh, they, they, she, when she went in the hospital, I don't know if she wants me telling all this or not, but I, uh, she went in the hospital. Her sugar, her blood sugar was very, very high. I'll just say it that way. Tremendously high. Uh, and they've been trying to treat that. And in treating that, it caused her to retain fluid. And the retaining of the fluid made her, her congestive heart failure flare up. And it, so it's just kind of been a one thing after the next. So they've gotten the fluid off. Uh, so now they're trying to deal with the blood sugar. So you pray for her. Uh, I know she would appreciate that. Uh, but just continue to pray for Miss Phyllis. Uh, Miss Roxanne had tests Monday. Uh, I'm not sure when they're going to hear back from that. But you pray for her uh, as, as they're uh, getting all that done and getting that together. Uh, pray for Miss Donna McCoy. Uh, she had a root canal this afternoon today. Uh, so you pray for her. I know she would appreciate that. Uh, pray for Brother Chris. I have not, let me see, tried to get a hold of him for, before service started. I have not heard from Brother Chris. Um, I know he had a, a doctor's appointment yesterday and today. Uh, just not sure which one was which. Uh, but you pray for him. 
Uh, I know that that would be a blessing. Uh, got time, got had an opportunity to sit and chat with him. What day was that? Saturday. Saturday. Monday. That was Monday. Uh, sat down and talked with him for a few minutes and uh, visited with him. So you pray for Brother Chris um, as well. Uh, pray for uh, the Travises. They're traveling uh, back uh, Friday, so you pray for them while they travel. Uh, again, that'd be a blessing as well. Several that we want to mention on our cancer list, continue to pray for Mr. Rodney uh, as they get everything prepared, get ready for his treatments. Pray for Mr. Dennis Lee. Uh, I know they would appreciate your prayers um, as well. And then Miss Jenny asked prayer for Miss Ellen Bullard, a uh, friend of hers that's starting cancer treatment as well. So do remember those three. And I'm just highlighting some uh, on the prayer list because we would be here for an extended period of time. Uh, let's do remember to pray for Miss Elizabeth's uh, uh, surgery. Uh, she'll be having. Uh, are they taking pins out or putting stuff? What, what? Taking them out. All right. So they'll be taking the pins out Wednesday. Uh, so you pray for her uh, as as all of that takes place. Uh, a couple of uh, other families we want to remember. Uh, the family of Don Short. Let's do remember that family. Uh, they had his funeral uh, Monday. Uh, but pray for them, and then pray for uh, the, the family of Thomas Devore. Uh, the Crouches ask prayer for that family, uh, so do remember them. Uh, also, let's do remember to continue to pray for Miss Sue Beard. I understand she is doing some better, but we want to continue to pray for her. A uh, friend of ours from uh, Gulfport, Jerry and Myra Reeder, he had knee surgery today. I thought he was having knee replacement. I don't know that it was because he texted my daughter uh, about 1.45 this afternoon and said he was headed home. Uh, I don't think if it was replacement, he'd have been headed home. So, uh, but you pray for them. Who, who knows with insurance today? Uh, you, you never can tell. All right. Uh, put a Band-Aid on it, send you home. Uh, but anyway, so you pray for them. Uh, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Barbara's mom, Miss Martha, uh, pray for her. Uh, and then we mentioned Brother Marvin Ramage. I want to continue to remember him. Uh, and Miss Louise Griggs, uh, that's Miss Amanda's uh, grandmother. Uh, remember that prayer request as well. As already has been mentioned, let's do remember to pray for uh, the family of Jody Cash. This is the, the deputy that was um, uh, that was shot and killed uh, this week uh, there from Callaway County. Let's do remember that family. Uh, I heard that they will be having a service for him, I think they said Saturday, uh, there in Murray, uh, and that they'll be having visitation for the family uh, at Hardin Baptist Church. So uh, do remember them in your prayers as well. All right, any others? I know we have some that'll be traveling, so we want to pray for them uh, while they're doing that, and, and others that'll be other things going on, so. All right, didn't want to miss anybody. Uh, let's mention our missionary of the week, and then we'll pray. Uh, do remember to pray for Brother Fisa. Uh, his last name's on there, uh, so if you want to pronounce it, you can, but uh, uh, Brother Fisa. Uh, let's do remember him there in Gabon, uh, Africa. Uh, I just what a joy it was to to get to know him just for a little bit while he was here. Uh, he he never he never failed. At least uh, every other week or so, I would get a phone call from Brother Fisa uh, before he went back to uh, Africa. Uh, now now he, now he's over in Africa and have time for me now. But I'm I'm kidding. Uh, but anyway, you pray for him uh, and the work there. A lot of things, a lot of information on that uh, uh, that right up so i'll just let you look at that at your leisure but do remember to pray for him all right well let's go to the lord in prayer let's oh i, I want to mention one let's mention one more i saw this week um they used to be members here uh let's do pray for uh miss miss spaulding well, Brittany. miss Brittany spaulding i could not think of her name saved my life uh she's been having some health issues uh, so please do remember to pray for her. her. I think she is doing much better, uh, but she is still having some problems. So if you would mention, mention them in prayer as well. All right, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer and, and we'll uh, move forward with our services. Father, again, we're thankful for uh, the day you've given us. What a joy just to be able to come before your throne of grace. Thanking you for another day that you've given us. Father, I pray that you'll be with all the prayer requests. Uh, so many, uh, it seems, that are having difficulties with illness and, and cancer and uh, other uh, problems of life. Father, I pray that you'll just continue to uplift them, give them grace and strength, help their bodies to heal. Father, I pray for those that are grieving lost loved ones. 
I pray that you would give them uh, grace, uh, that you would just continue to uplift them and let them know that you are there, that you are real, uh, that you are uh, working in their life. Father, I pray that you would just continue to uh, be with those that are looking at procedures upcoming, uh, maybe uh, still waiting for diagnosis uh, or whatever the situation may be. Father, I pray you'll give grace and wisdom and, and comfort and peace. I pray that you'll help us as a church, that we'll focus our hearts and minds upon you and that we'll be open and allow you to work and move in our lives in ways that, that so many times we can't even understand or may not even know. Father, I pray that you'll help us to submit ourselves to you and give ourselves for your honor and your glory. I pray that you'll be with our services tonight, that you'd meet with us, that you'd speak to our hearts in a very, very special way, uh, that you'd take even some of the simplest thoughts and simplest uh, principles, but that you would do a great work in our life through them. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercies. Pr pray that you'd be with us in the remainder of our services. In yeah. Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to go. I'm going to go eat. Y'all just have to talk to me. <laughs> I'll throw you the songbook. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you, may, you can remain seated and turn to page 327. Page 327, we'll sing the first, second, and last verses of Higher Ground. Amen. seated turn to page 288 page 288 let's sing i am resolved Hasten to 
Take your Bible, 1 Timothy. I don't know where we're headed. 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Brother Jaco, you want to come sit right on the front? It's about deacons tonight. <laughs> Amen. Oh, my. Oh, all right. 1 Timothy chapter 3 is where we're going to pick up. Uh, Tonight, we're going to go ahead and move forward. We dealt with uh, the last two services. We talked about uh, the qualifications of a pastor and looked at that. Uh, and now we'll be moving into uh, the idea of uh, the qualifications of a deacon. Uh, and in doing so, remember, uh, we talked about the idea that we're not really dealing so much with, with the idea of rank, uh, as we are uh, of doing the idea of service. And we, we've really got to kind of get that out of our minds and out of our, our way of thinking uh, uh, about uh, this idea of rank. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, well, this guy's more important than these folks and these folks are more important. Hey, no, we're all, we're all, and we'll finish up tonight if we get that far, we'll finish up tonight with the idea that we're all on the same team. And, and we all have our specific responsibilities and duties on that team, uh, but it takes the entire team. Uh, you know, I, I just if you ladies, I, I, my wife gets on me every, that's why I say this every time I talk about a sports illustration. She says, you know, no, I don't use sports illustrations. Some ladies don't understand them. Well, I'm sorry, ladies, I'm just going to use one, okay? Uh, that, that, that's why some, one of the greatest, I mean, you name the greatest quarterback that's ever lived, wherever you, whichever one you think it, it is, if he didn't have an offensive line to protect him, it didn't matter how good he was. It didn't matter how fast he could run, how far he could throw. It didn't matter. You know, if he was running from his li for his life for, uh, for, for the whole game, uh, he wasn't effective. You know, so it takes a team. It takes a group of people to come together to, to, to make something happen and make something work. Well, that's the same way with a church. Now, I agree there are different positions uh, in a church and there are different areas of service and different callings of God on different ones. Uh, so, so we all fill our place, but we need to get away from this idea of, well, he's the pastor. No, I just, I'm just a guy, and I'll, I'll say this again before it's all said and done, I'm just a guy that's privileged enough uh, that my job, my job is to stay in this book and study, and I don't take that lightly, that, that you have provided me the opportunity to spend my time in this book and studying instead of having to do something, let me say it right, instead of needing to do something else to provide the basic needs for my family. And, and I don't take that lightly because now my job is to do that and spend my time in this so that I can share with you what God has spoken to my heart in the time that you have allowed me to spend studying the Scriptures. And so when we look at it from that perspective, it's not an idea of, well, he's up there and we're over here. No, it's we're all on the same team. And we all play our specific role in what God has designed and what God has orchestrated and put together as His local New Testament church. 
So I, I hope you've seen that already as we went through and talked about uh, the, the qualifications of a pastor. But as we go forward in this, in this leadership manual and, and we start talking a l- little deeper into this, uh, we just want to remember uh, that we're dealing with specifically uh, the public worship and, and, uh, and leadership of a local New Testament church. And, and again, chapter 2, we talked about... Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, chapter 2, we talked about uh, what we would term as the laity or, or the congregation and the part that, play, part that they play, the place that they have in worship. Uh, and, and I find it interesting that he deals with them first in chapter 2. And then he comes back in chapter 3 and begins to deal with the leadership. And then last week, or the last two weeks, we talked about the qualifications of the bishop and, and our, our pastor, and we dealt with all of those uh, and went through all of that. So tonight we're going to pick up there. We're going to start in verse number 8, and we're not going to read. I decided that we're not going to read the entire thing and then try to come back. We're just going to jump in here in just a moment. We'll start in verse 8. So if you'll find 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 8 and be ready, uh, we'll jump in and just verse by verse. We'll go through this uh, and look at these uh, few verses from verse 8 to verse uh, number 13 tonight. And my plan is hopefully to get through uh, all of that without going too far over. All right. So let's remember, first of all, uh, the definition of a pastor. Uh, or, and they use the word here in 1 Timothy, the word bishop. And that word bishop literally means an overseer. Uh, one that oversees, looks, inspects, uh, guards, watches. Uh, that's the idea of the bishop. Uh, and, and again, it's a, it, it is a privileged it is a privileged position, not from the fact that, that, that it's, it, it, it is special or better, but it's a privileged position for me that you have entrusted your spiritual growth to me. Now, that, I'm not, that's not the only way you can grow. But as having a pastor, what, the way this is supposed to work is, I'm supposed to take my time and spend my time in study and work and, and, and effort and, and getting in the Word of God that I might help you grow spiritually. And, and, and on your part, you're helping me to, to be able to do that and then receiving and, and, and digesting the Word of God. So, so it's a, a working relationship. Again, it's not, I, I guess probably I thought about this today and I started to put a picture on here, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want all the blowback. I started. I started, it's almost like, you remember the old, the old uh, uh, sheepdog cartoon? You know, the wily coyote, and he'd be out there, or not wily coyote, but the old fox would be out there trying to get the sheep, and the old sheepdog was always sitting up there on the rock, you know, and always had the hair down, down here, and you didn't think he could see nothing, but he saw everything. You know, he, he was all, you know, always guarding the sheep and all of that stuff. Well, that's kind of the picture that comes to my mind when you start talking about a bishop, because that's the, that's the overseer. That's the picture uh, that is put forth by that word bishop. All right? So now moving into the, the next section, now we'll start and we'll talk about the deacon. Brother Phil, did you get a hold of my stuff? Hey, man, good night. <laughs> I thought I put that in there just for you, Brother Phil. I thought you'd like that. Hey, man, uh, that's not a deacon. No, that's not what the deacon does. All right, so, so really, what, what is the definition of a deacon? The definition of a deacon is this. It's one who executes the commands of another. That Literally, that's what deacon means, right? He, he is an attendant or also a waiter is, is the idea of that word deacon. He is a servant. That's what that word means. And, and we're not going to spend time tonight... We may do it a little bit later, but we're not going to do, do it tonight to go back and talk about Acts chapter number 6 and, and the, the first deacons and, and how all that happened and kind of the way that was laid out. But, uh, but I, I, usually that, that's the way it works. Usually, well, I got in trouble the other day. I mentioned this on, on the Internet. Boy, folks get aggravated. Uh, but a lot of times with, with a principle in the Scriptures called the first mention principle, normally if you'll find the place that that, that principle is first mentioned in the Bible, uh, it'll give you a lot of inf- basic information and foundational information about that subject. Same thing with the deacons, Acts chapter 6. If you'll go back and you'll look about when they chose the first deacons, we'll refer to it a few times tonight, all right? Uh, so that's basically what a deacon is. A deacon, and here's the thing, a deacon is a team member. 
and, and we need to understand that. Pastors don't need to look down on deacons and think that they're inferior because they're not, they're not preachers. No, they are team members that God has placed in our church to help our church in leadership and service uh, and to complete our church uh, that we might do what God wants us to do. And then just the other way around as well, deacons should not look at pastors as, as being uh, high and mighty or being oh, holier than thou and, you know, because that's, that's not the relationship that we need to have. If our church is going to grow and prosper, uh, it's going to have to be a relationship that is we are on the same team. And we're working toward the same goal. One of the things that I've asked our deacons to do, and, and brother, you can ask Brother Phil, I'm sure he would uh, 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 agree with this or, or attest to this. One of the first meetings that we had as our deacons, back then we had three uh, all serving at one time, and when we're going to get back close to that, uh, not too dis- near future, but uh, or not too distant. We're going to get there anyway. Uh, but one of the things that I, I mentioned to our deacons in one of the very first meetings that we had, I, I, I said this, I said, now listen, I need your thoughts and I need your opinion. I need to know what you're thinking, even if it doesn't agree with me, or even if it's contrary to something that I've said, or even if you think that I'm wrong. I need to hear that because God has placed us together because maybe that's what I need to hear to, to adjust some of the things, the way that I'm looking at things, I, I, we, we want to be very open uh, and, and discuss things because we're on the same team and we're trying to accomplish what God desires. And I thank the Lord they have done that uh, over these last four years. They've been very gracious, uh, but, they have, but I don't know of any, I don't know any time uh, that one of the deacons walked away and said, well, I wish I'd have said at least they've never let me, let me know that or, or give me any indication uh, that, that's the, that the, that's the way they, that it was. So we just need to remember. And I want to start off with that because I, I appreciate our deacons and I appreciate the relationship that we have. Uh, and I'm looking forward to building those relationships and just moving forward because they have been such a help to your pastor. And I just want to start off there. All right? So let's jump in and we'll get to verse number 8. Uh, and we'll start. So if you look at verse number 8, he starts off with these words, Likewise must deacons be grave. He, he uses that phrase, likewise. I, I find it interesting that that word is, a, a, is an adverb. And, and it's, it's, it's talking about all of the things, all the characteristics, all of the things that he said about a, about a bishop. He, he's equating not specifically those characteristics, but he's trying to get them to understand just as important, and we'll talk about these three things in a minute, but just as important as, as it was for a bishop to have these qualifications, it's just important for a deacon to have these qualifications because we have, we're serving on the same team and we want to be right with God and want to do exactly the best that God designs and desires in our heart. All right, There were three things that I thought about as I went through this. Uh, just when he used this word likewise or in the same way, I thought about the importance. The the deacon is just as important as the pastor because God ordained that deacon for that place. And if God ordained, and and I will say this as well, I will go a little bit further than that, and I will say that Sunday school teacher, I'll say that bus worker, I'll say that junior church worker is just as important as anybody else because God has put all of these folks together uh, that we might grow and we might learn and we might spiritually grow as a church. And God has put the team together to function in that manner. We've got to be a team all pulling together for the honor and glory of the Lord. I I mentioned this a few months ago, maybe longer than that, about uh, the... Uh, neat fact about a, a team of horses. I don't know if you're aware of this. I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I love to, to watch videos of, of these, um, uh, I can't think of what they're called, uh, the big Clydesdale, the big draft horses. That's what they're called, draft horses. That, and and, and the, the work, the pulling, and all the things that they do. And, and I, I found something very interesting. Two horses hitched together can pull more together than the sum of what each one can pull by themselves. I find that interesting. 
I, you know, I just for, for, for numbers sake, we'll just say this. If one can pull 1,000 pounds and the other one can pull 1,500 pounds, you hook them up together, they're going to pull more than 2,500 pounds in working together and getting the job done. Same thing with us. We're going to be able to get more accomplished working together than the sum of each, what each one of us can do separate. And that's the idea. So the importance of the deacon is on the same level as any other, any other position in the church. They're all important. And that's, that's the first thing we, I saw in this idea of likeness. Number two, I, I, the, the same idea of the necessity. You'll notice in your Bible where it says, Likewise, right, let me get back and see exactly how it said, Likewise must the deacon. You'll notice in your Bible that must is, is in italics. Everybody know what that means? That means the translator supplied that word there for our understanding. Where did it come from? It came from the understanding of that first word, likewise. Just like with the pastor, the bishop, it was necessary for all of these things. It is necessary for the deacon just like it was the pastor. That's the idea of likewise. And then I thought about this, just the vitality of, or, or the, the vitalness uh, of the work of the deacon. Again, I, I'll just say it this way, and I, 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 I didn't stole my own thunder of this one, but we're going to do more together than we will apart. And the role of a deacon is a vital role. Just as the role of a pastor is a vital role. Catch, here's, here's, the clar, here's the clarifying statement. Now, you, you write this one down when they are done correctly. Now, there's your key. All right? How many of us, how many of us have heard stories of preachers that have been nightmares? Amen. Hopefully, hopefully we're not writing one. Amen. <laughs> how many of us have heard stories of deacons that have been nightmares? All right, before you get too excited, how many of you heard stories about church members that have been nightmares? Amen. All right. We've all been there. If we will serve God and seek Him and let Him work in our lives, we can accomplish so much as we, to steal a phrase, as we stay in our lane and do what God's called us to do and allow others to do what God's called them to do, then we can see God do great things. One little word, likewise. I, I got excited about that this, this afternoon. All right. So here we go, likewise the deacon must be, uh, likewise must the deacons be grave. Be grave, All right? If you go back to verse number 4 of our text, that's the one that was talking about the pastor or the bishop, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. That word gravity is the same word that's used here for the deacon being grave. Three things we learned about that. Some of this is going to go very quickly because we've already learned most of this. The three things we learned about that being grave or that gravity, the three things was it dealt with the idea of being honorable, being respectable, and having dignity. As we lead and as we try to order our household and as we try to, uh, to be uh, leaders in our church, we want to make sure that what we're doing is we're doing everything in our power to, to be honorable, to be respectable, and be dignified. We want to do things correctly. Uh, we must be grave. We, we must have a, a seriousness about us and that we understand what we're dealing with. Right? We're not just, listen, I wish, I wish it was all just about the preaching, running around up here, having a good time. I, I really, I wish I, I wish I could do that. And, and you know, I could, probably, I could probably wing it for a while and you might not catch on for a little bit. Uh, uh, but, you know, eventually I'm going to run out of soap. And, and eventually what's going to happen is you're going to say, oh, he's preaching that sermon again. And we're not going to grow. But if we'll spend the time and we'll do what's necessary and, and we'll, we'll understand the, and, and be serious about our position and our, and our responsibilities, then we can see God do great things. All right, so deacon number one, he must be grave. Number two, it says this, not double-tongued. Not double-tongued. What does that mean? Not to be deceitful in his words. Not to say one thing to somebody else and something else to, to another person. 
I, I guess the simple term that we would use today in our language, in our vernacular, would be don't be a liar. Have some honesty about it, some integrity. All right? So a deacon, he, he must not be double-tongued. He, he, he's got to be one that's going to be very, very uh, open and very honest with what he says. And that's, what I, that's the one thing, that's the one thing uh, that I have asked our deacons to do for me. Again, I said that earlier, is just be honest with me. Tell me, what, tell me help me see what I can't see. Help me understand what I'm missing. Uh, sometimes you may hear things that I don't. Let me know what's going on. Why? Because we're on the same team trying to meet God uh, and trying to, to, to move folks in the direction that God wants us to go. All right? So let's not be double-tongued. That was the next one. The next one is this, not given to much wine. Now, we talked a little bit about this last week. Uh, we'll not spend a lot of time on this uh, and the difference between uh, uh, bishop and deacon. That doesn't mean that the deacon can have a little bit. All right? That's not what he's saying here. Uh, he, he is just emphasizing the idea where, he, where the wording with the bishop, if you remember, the wording there dealt with the idea uh, of not being influenced, staying away from it completely. Uh, and it was almost like it, there was an understanding uh, that preacher wasn't going to be drinking anyway. The way that was worded, it was almost worded like preacher ain't got no business doing it anyhow. He goes forward, and when he deals with the deacon, he says it this way, not given to much wine, and the idea is to understand the influence that this alcohol would have on the individual. And if you're trying to be a leader, and you're trying to help, and you're trying to help govern, and you're trying to help uh, uh, lead spiritually, uh, that you have no business dealing with that that's going to... Uh, um, uh, uh, influence you in a negative manner. So no, he's not saying you can get a little bit right here. He's saying stay away from it completely. Just stay away. All right? Uh, moving on, he says this, not greedy of filthy lucre. Now this is exactly the way it was worded for the, for the bishop. It means exactly the same thing. All right? He says this, we, we can't be eager for dishonorable gain. Or as the, 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 the graphic sh says there, Fast money. Now, if we get caught up in this idea of, of making that quick buck and, and, and just all the schemes and everything that go along with all of that, we're going to fall into that trap of the world and we're going to forget that spiritual growth, true spirit... Now, now you just you, you bear with me here. But true spiritual growth, it takes time. It takes effort. It's not going to happen overnight. I mean, you don't wake up one, you don't go to bed, take your Bible, lay it on your pillow, and sleep on it one night, and wake up the next morning, and by osmosis, you got all of it. That's not the way it works. It takes some work, and it takes some time, and we've got to be ready, and we've got to be willing to do the work that's necessary. I, 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 I kind of don't know if I want to say this. I'm trying to figure out exactly the way to say it. Because I don't mean it ugly, but, but I, I just want to try to crack the door to that office just a little bit and give you kind of a, a help understand. Sometimes the discussions that happen, sometimes the discussions that take place between pastor and deacons are not fun discussions. Sometimes they're difficult things that you're trying to deal with and you're trying to find the right way and you're trying to find God's direction and, and, and they're not easy. And, and I think part of the, the understanding of this statement, not greedy of filthy lucre, and, and not being quick to, to look for the easy fix or the fast out, uh, is to understand that sometimes things are going to be hard and things are going to be difficult, uh, but, but usually those things that are worth it are difficult and are hard and do take time and, and do take some effort. He goes on in verse number 9 and he says this, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. I, I think it, as, it's almost like he pauses here at verse number 9, takes a breath and says, it's got to be more than just a, a, a mental ascent. 
It's got to be more than just knowing all the facts and knowing all the right words to say, knowing, knowing the right verses to go to. It's got to be more than that. If we're going to stay by this stuff and we're going to see long-term church growth and we're going to see long-term pastors and deacons and church members, I'll add those in there too, it's going to take some holding to the mysteries of the faith. It is going to take holding on to those things that we've learned in the Scripture and not just have them here, but have them here. It's not just to have a mental understanding, but it's to have a heart belief and to grasp them in our heart and understand that circumstances, that's not what we're dealing with. We're dealing with faith in Christ and we want to serve Him. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's happy, sometimes it's sad, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's difficult, but just by faith we are going to hold to the mysteries uh, and with a pure conscience and with a focus on Christ, and we are just going to do what's needed for the cause of Christ. So move to verse number 10. He, he builds upon this idea and he says, and, and let these also first be proved. The idea there is to be examined, to be looked over very carefully. If you'll remember, and I, again, we're not going to spend a lot of time on that, but if you, if you would, don't turn, we're not going to leave. But Acts chapter 6, if you'd go back to that, he told them to look out seven men of honest report, of good report, full of the Holy Spirit, full of faith. He said, you look out these men, not novices, not, and that's why verse 6 is up there, because that refers right back to verse 6 we talked about last week, where it talked about a pastor not being a novice, not being a new plant, not being new growth. No, there's got, there's, got to be some, there's got to be some learning. There's got to be some, uh, some mentoring. There, there's got to be some uh, evidence in their life. They're seeking the Lord. Now, I'm going to pause right here and just kind of rope Brother Baske into this, but that's exactly, that's exactly what we've talked about with Brother Baske. I mean, have we, have we grilled him? No. Have we, have we drug his feet through the fire? No. But we're just examining. We're just watching. We're getting to know him. He's getting to know us. We're learning his character. We're learning his integrity. We're learning his faithfulness. We're learning all of these things. Why? Because the scriptures tell us that a deacon needs to be first proven or proved. Now, again, not a novice. Someone that has demonstrated some faith and some some wisdom, and some maturity. Verse number 10, he goes on and says this, Then let them use the office of a deacon. Let them use the office of a deacon. What does that mean? Anytime you ever hear verbiage like that, that's a bad thing. What's he trying to say? He's saying, when you take that, it's almost like taking an oath of office. When you take an oath of office, when the President of the United States is sworn into office, what does he do? He swears to uphold all of the responsibilities and duties of that office. That's exactly what he's saying here. You, you prove them first, you find out if they meet the qualifications, and if they do, uh, then let them use. Let them, uh, uh, let, let them re assume the responsibilities and duties of that office and let them do it, and we'll get to that in a little bit, let them do it well. But again, it's understanding that there are, <laughs> there are responsibilities and duties that come along with the office. Well, that's what some young preachers don't understand. They don't understand that with pastoring and preaching come a lot of responsibilities and duties. They think it's all fun. Well, and they like the they, they like the they, 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 they like being in the pulpit, and they like the preaching part, and they, they like the amen preacher part, and they, uh, they like the, the, the pastor part, and, and, and they like that, that limelight, if you will. 
But a novice is soon going to find out that sometimes that limelight's not quite so bright. They're going to soon find out that sometimes those amens are, are a little hard to come by. That they're going to find out that sometimes, you know, the honeymoon does eventually end. We've got to learn to use that office well. And fulfill the duties and responsibilities. And I'll just pause right here and say this. Thank God I've not had any difficulty with our deacons not fulfilling their duties and responsibilities. And we talked about this last week, so we'll quickly deal with this. Being found blameless. Again, that's not perfect. That's not what that means. But what it does mean is this, quick to repent, quick to change, quick to submit themselves to the Scriptures, willing to do what's necessary to make things right. You get to verse 11, and you get into, well, we don't have, we don't have a lot of time for this, but I'll just, real quick. Even so must their wives be grave. Now, there are several thoughts. There's three main ideas here about this verse of Scripture. Who is he talking about? Well, obviously, to me, the first obvious statement is he's talking about the wives of the deacons. Well, the question is, if verse 11 is talking about the wives of the deacons, why did God not mention the wives of the pastor? He said the same thing, that they must be the husband of one wife. So why did he mention any qualifications about the wife of the pastor? Well, I'm not 100% sure I got an idea about that. Now, uh, we'll get to it here in a little bit. Uh, so, uh, the, the, the second thing is, the, the first thing is that he's talking about the deacon's wives. The second thing, idea is he's talking about mainly wives in general, which to me is a little stretch on that one, but, you know, I, that's some folks think that. And then the third idea is that there was a special class, and I think Romans chapter, Romans 16, I think, what, verse 1 talked about uh, uh, the, the, was it Phoebe, and they called her the servant of the church. That word servant is the same word that we get deacon from. And, and there's some that say, well, he's talking about this class of deaconesses. I think that's a bit of a stretch, but, uh, you know, so there's three areas, three ways of looking at that, three ways of thinking. Now, I, I'm just a simple guy. I think, as you read verse number 11, even so must their wives be grave. I think that that their wives kind of limits this thing. So, so I am of the impression uh, that he's talking about the wives of the deacons. Uh, well, what about pastor's wives? Well, I think he dealt with pastor's wives when he talked about uh, the pastor uh, uh, leading his own home or taking care of his own home uh, and leading the home and the children. I think that kind of encompasses the wife there. Uh, and then he talks about this here in verse number 11. So, uh, let's move on with that. Even so must their wives be grave. Same word, same word he used with the deacon just a few minutes ago. Talked about having that honor, respect, dignity, uh, those kind of things. Uh, when, in the way that you operate, you do that to gain that honor and respect and dignity of others. All right? Uh, and then he said this about the, the wives, uh, not slanderers, not slanderers, making no accusation. The literal word there is a female form of the word devil. Basically, if you want to literally translate that, it would be a she-devil, is what it says. Uh, but what's that word devil? What does it mean? The accuser. The, he's the accuser of the brethren. So it says not slanderers. All right? How many, well, I ain't going to ask that question. All right, we're going to move on. <laughs> to be sober. To be sober. That word is the same word that's used in verse 2 that's translated vigilant, for the pastor. She is to be sober. What does that mean? We, we found out that meant to, to have a watch care over their own conduct. To be vigilant, to be sober-minded, to, to, to see what's going on, understand the, the influence and the effect that they can have. That deacon's wife is going to be privy to a lot of information that other folks aren't going to know. That deacon's wife is going to be uh, influential with a lot of other ladies as, uh, as they uh, uh, work with their husband uh, and, and, and lead and help work in the church. And, and so this idea of being sober or being vigilant uh, is involved there. 
he finishes up this idea with the ladies and says, being faithful in all things. You got any other questions, ladies? You just be faithful. You just be faithful unto the Lord. You just seek the Lord. Now, I think personally, I think this would fit all ladies. I think you can make an application to that. I think, I think it would fit a lot of men too. We see here that it's mentioned under the idea of the deacon. All right? And then we move on to verse number 12. Let the deacons be the husband of one wife. Again, we dealt with this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, literally, that means one woman man. That's what it means. Uh, I, you know, I'm a literalist. I believe that ought to be one. Uh, whether you want to say it's one, one at a time, one period, I just, you know, I think you ought to have one living wife. That's, uh, that's it. That's all you ought to have. You know, just one. All right? Uh, so let the deacons be the husband of one wife. Here it is, ruling their children and their own houses well. Same thing that he told the pastor or the bishop earlier, uh, for, for the most part, presiding over that house, leading that house, fairly judging that house, gaining their reverence, gaining their uh, uh, support, gaining their um, not reverence, I don't want to use that word, uh, but, but their respect uh, for uh, the way that you handle uh, yourself. Now listen, I, I, I'll say this, I've got a couple of minutes, I'll say this. I'm not talking about, you know, at a, as a two-year-old, uh, that you explain to that two-year-old everything that you're doing. I've, saw, I've, I've watched guys do that, and I'm thinking, you know, that two-year-old's got an attention span of a goldfish. You know, he has forgotten what's going on. He don't know. And you're, expl- you're getting him a 20-minute lecture on something he did that he forgot 15 minutes ago. You know, there, now there comes a point in time when that boy gets seven, eight, nine, year, ten years old. The older he gets, the more time you can spend explaining that young lady. You can spend explaining to them. So, I, you know, I'm not talking about uh, presiding over and gaining. You got to, you know, you do. No, no, no. There, there's a time. There, there's a growth in that thing. Two-year-old, the best thing you can do with a two-year-old, hand their hide, let them know what's right and wrong, uh, and, 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 and teach them. That's, a, that's the best thing you can do. Okay. Race two, I just got a little bit of experience. You just write that down somewhere and think, oh, he's going to get in trouble with the Internet. That's all right. I may, may do it. All right, uh, verse 13. For they that have used the office of a deacon well. Okay, we're back to that idea of using the office of the deacon. Right? Uh, those that have understood the responsibilities, that have accepted what God wants for us to do, and have gotten into the work and, and, and fulfilled the role that God has called us to. Right, he gives us two things here. They have purchased to themselves a good degree. That word purchased is the idea of acquired. And, and acquired by either payment, acquired by barter, by labor. Somehow, just by using that position or that office of a deacon well, you have acquired, and this is what it says, a good degree. And it's the idea uh, that you have taken that step up in that maturity. You are moving in maturity. Literally, that good degree means a next step. So in spiritual matters, as you use the office of a deacon well, you are growing in maturity. You are learning more and more about serving Christ. And then he says this, the second part, great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Not only in spiritual matters are you growing degrees, but also in speaking matters. You will have great boldness in the faith. You will be able to share and be able to have influence with others because they have watched you grow and they have watched you mature and they have seen that you have grown in grace. Therefore, they will listen So we'll finish up, and that's the last verse. So we'll finish up with this. We talked about the deacon, the the bishops and the deacons and their wives. And I just wanted to put this picture, because I wanted to bring it all into one, put it all, bring it all back to, to, to one team. I think as we all come together, in the positions that God has placed us in, and we all fulfill our role on God's team, 
we can understand what it means to have a dream team. See God do things that we can't even fathom as we all do our part, whatever it may be. And I'll finish with this thought. We've got to get back to an understanding. and We've got to continue with the understanding that there are no big eyes and little ears. That every one of us, no matter what part we play, are just as important as anyone else in the room as we serve God today. I'm so thankful that God has orchestrated His church how He has. I'm so thankful that God has placed within His church individuals to serve in certain areas. As we all work together, see God do great. I almost put this up there, but I thought it was a little too cheeky. But as the dream team, I'm going to say it anyway, as the dream team, I think there's an old saying, a saying that goes like this, teamwork, it's teamwork that makes the dream work. So I'm going to pray. I want to say this before I pray. Thank you. Thank you for being on God's team. Thank you for serving. Calvary Baptist Church. Thank you for doing what you do. Because I can't do what you do. Because it's your call. But we can all do it together. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Father, we are thankful for. First of all, for our deacons. Father, I'm thankful for men of God that are willing. That are willing to take on that role that sometimes is a thankless role. Sometimes it's a very difficult role. Father, I'm thankful for men of our church that have stepped up and filled that place used of God to help this preacher, to help this church. Father, I'm thankful for every member that has filled their place, is doing what God's called them to do. I pray that you'll help us to continue, that you'll help us to do more. Father, that you'd add to our family. You'd help us as we seek to serve you for your honor and your glory. Father, we love you. We thank you for your grace and your mercies toward us. In Jesus' name. Let's all stand. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Maybe God's dealing with your, with your heart tonight about getting on the team. Maybe you need to come tonight and just say, Here, I'm, I, I, I'm in, preacher. Maybe you'd like to get in this altar and just make a commitment to the Lord. Submitting yourself to Him. Maybe. God's been dealing with your heart about serving in a certain area. Won't you come to me after service and say, Preacher, God, and let me know. Let's talk about it. Maybe tonight, as we talked about getting on the team, maybe tonight you would have to, you'd have to admit that you're not 100% sure that you're even on the team. That you're not sure that you're saved, born again, on your way to heaven. Give you an opportunity tonight to come. Let me take a Bible. Show you how you can know Jesus. Free pardon of sin. Anyone need to come tonight? All right, I thank you for your prayers and thank you for your presence tonight. Maybe it's been good to be in the house of the Lord.
thank you for your, your time tonight. Uh, make sure you, you go by. I think tonight uh, is the last night. That I, they may do one more, but I think tonight was the last night for Kids Club for the summer. Um, so if you want to uh, go back there and check on the youngins and congratulate them for making it through another, uh, another year, uh, we'll be excited about that uh, and look forward to all the things that will be going on. Junior Church Sunday, uh, looking at trying to get you know, vacation Bible school, getting all of that ready. Uh, Sunday school classes, starting organizing, getting those back in order. Bus routes on Wednesday, on Sunday, uh, Saturdays and then running on Sunday. And just so many things going on right now that you can get involved in uh, as the Lord directs you and leads you. All right, any other prayer requests or any other announcement before we dismiss? I am, going to say, I am going to say this because I pick on him so much. I, Brother Phil, I appreciate you. I really do. You have been a blessing to this preacher, uh, and you've been a blessing to our church. Thank you. Would you dismiss us in prayer, please?